Welcome to Lokasatta Yashishvi Bhava. Myself, Amit Palo. Today we are going to deal with the first chapter in the geometry that is similarity. I am sure you have read the article of the Gosavi sir where he has given the entire detail about the geometry syllabus of standard 10th and he has given the minute details about each and every chapters, what is the content of each and every chapter. And I am sure you have seen the video of the same. Uh, before going to standard 10 syllabus, first open the standard 9 syllabus of uh, textbooks of standard 9 geometry and revise the various theorems, formulas, constructions given in standard 9 textbook. In standard 9, some of the important theorems are isosceles triangle theorem and its converse, midpoint theorem, converse of midpoint theorem, remote interior angle theorem, angle bisector theorem, perpendicular bisector theorems, all these theorems you revise from the 9 standard textbook. At the same time, revise the constructions which are given in standard 9 textbooks, revise all the formulas which are given in the, in the chapter mensuration and then only you can start with studying the standard 10 syllabus. Now, in the standard 10 syllabus, the first two chapters that is similarity and the circle, they include the theorem. I am sure you must be familiar with how to write theorems in, uh, from your standard 9th. But let us revise again. For theorem, only the statement will be given in the exam. The name of the theorem will not be given. For example, the, the statement of BPT will be given in the exam and from that statement, you have to decide whether the theorem is BPT or it is a converse of BPT is asked. Now, in, in any theorem, the different steps which are followed are as follows. First thing is, you draw a complete and correct diagram using scale and pencil. Make sure you draw a diagram with, which is a logically and technically correct diagram. After drawing diagram, from the diagram you write the given and then you write down to prove. Then many times when the given data is not sufficient, we have to do construction, but that is if, if possible, if required. Then we come down to the next part is that is a proof of the theorem. If better, if you write the proof by making the columns of statement and reason. For every statement, the reason is important. And in the end, you can conclude the theorem by writing the, the statement of the theorem. And very important things about theorem is, you are not allowed to change the method of the theorem. The method of the theorem has to be te textbook method only. You can add the extra steps in the theorem which are maybe which may not be there or if some reasons are missing then you can add there but do not change the method of the theorem. Second thing is if there is no diagram and even if the theorem is written correctly then no marks will be given to it. So make sure you draw correct diagram. Third thing is there has to be link between the diagram and what you are writing. Many times the diagram is different and theorem written is different. So there is no link between the two. Again, the no marks will be given. So all these things you should keep in mind. And the theorems are only given in the first and the second chapter. Go through all the each and every theorems. There is no important or asterisk theorems which are given or marked in the textbook. You have to go through each and every theorem which are given in the textbook. Now we will see what are the common mistakes done by the students when they write the uh, when they solve the sums or when they solve the particular, in, uh, or when they solve the proofs. For example, in the textbook, in the beginning of the textbook, they are given four properties regarding the ratio of areas of two triangles. The first property is the ratio of areas of two triangles is equal to the ratio of product of corresponding base and height. Second property is the ratio of areas of two triangles with equal bases is equal to the ratio of corresponding heights. The third property is ratio of areas of two triangles with equal heights is equal to the ratio of corresponding bases. And the fourth property is the, the areas of two triangles are equal if the base and height is equal. Either you write this property in the form of complete statement or you can write in the short as shown over here. It is also given in the textbook. Then in the same similarity chapter you have given a, you have learned about the theorem on areas of similar triangles which says that if two triangles are similar then the ratio of areas is equal to the ratio of ratio of the square of corresponding sides there is always confusion between when to apply the property or when to apply the theorem on areas of similar triangles then here, here are the two examples which are given in the first example again something some information about the area is given then the two triangles have common base in the second example also the same thing, some information about area of triangle is given and you have to find the corresponding heights. First example also you have to find the corresponding heights. Now where to use theorem on areas of similar triangles and where to use those 
four properties. Remember, theorem on areas of similar triangle is applicable only when the two triangles are similar. So, in a particular sum, if you come across it, the word triangle similar to triangle, then you have to apply theorem on areas of similar triangles. If nothing is mentioned about the triangles and they have just used the word two triangles with common base, common height, then you have to use any one of the properties from out of those four properties. So, remember whenever there is a word similarity, the two triangles are similar, mentioned something about areas of the two triangles are given, then you have to use theorem on areas. If they have used, they have not used any word regarding the similarity of triangle, but still they are given some information about areas of triangle plus some common base or height is given, then we will use the one of the properties of the which is given in the areas of ratio of areas of two triangles. One more example will you see how the mistake can be done even if you change even as if you change the small word like instead of property if you write theorem how the things can go wrong. For example, in textbook you have angle bisector property which is already proved after the BPT and converse of BPT. According to angle bisector property in a triangle, the angle bisector divides the side opposite to it in the ratio of the remaining two sides. Now, this is called as an angle bisector property. If we use the instead of property, if you use the word theorem, that totally the meaning changes. Angle bisector theorem you have learned in standard 9th, which says that if point M lies on the bisector of angle ABC, then point M is equidistant from the sides of angle ABC and therefore you get MN is equal to MO. So, make sure you do not make mistake when to write property and when to write theorem, both are, both are not the same. If you are saying the property, then it is, it is given in the standard 10 textbook. If you are saying angle bisector theorem, then it is given in the standard 9 textbook. There is a difference between the two, make sure you do not make that mistake. One more example where we, uh, the students make a mistake is when to write BPT and when to write the the property of intercept made by three parallel lines as in this example line PQ is parallel to side BC the value of PB AQ QC is given we know that BPT is applicable only in case of a triangle so in this case according to BPT we get ratio AP upon PB is equal to AQ upon QC in this case it is a trapezium which is ABCD and you have three parallel lines that is AD PQ and BC and there are two transverses that is AB and CD. In this case also we get the same ratio as shown over here, we get AP upon PB is equal to DQ upon QC, but in this case you are not going to write the reason as BPT, the reason has to be mentioned as the property of intercept made by three parallel lines. So, do not make a mistake between when to write BPT and when to write the property of intercept made by three parallel lines. Oh, uh, remember BPT is applicable only when you are talking about the triangle. I am sure you will not do the mistakes, uh, what I have told you just now, those repeat those mistakes when you are writing the question paper. I am sure you have read the article on the first article on the similarity. In the article, uh, I have given you the MCQs uh, based on similarity. The MCQs are very much part of the internal assessment and you do, I do not think so you have to prepare anything extra for them. As you uh, study the lessons, the MCQ are the part of the lessons only. Then the, the various activities are also given in the textbook which are also given in the article. The various open ended questions can be also asked in the paper, the example is also given in the first article. So, please read the article very carefully and we will deal with the, the, other, the other part of the similarity chapter, the various types of sums in the, the next article.